Welcome to the second episode of our Sentinel comic series, everyone. We'll be finishing up our character creation this episode, but before we get to that, our usual announcements, and this time, actual announcements. <laughs> actual announcements. <laughs> uh, first up, if you haven't heard, uh, there is a little Kickstarter going on for a game called Avatar Legends, the role-playing game by Magpie Games. Uh, previous guest on the show, Daniel Kwan, uh, and a really diverse uh, cast of developers and crew are working on this Powered by the Apocalypse game. Uh, and it's it's smashing through TTRPG records on Kickstarter it's right bananas. now. I think it's like over three and a half million uh, right now, yeah. which is ridiculous. Um, so yeah, if you haven't checked it out yet somehow, uh, head on over there. The link's in the show notes. Um, it It looks cool. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can get with it. And yeah, it's it's really fun to see an indie RPG uh, just kind of skyrocketing like this. Yeah, when they announced the the names attached to it um, a few months ago or whenever that was, because time has no meaning, um, I was really impressed with, with the people that they had pulled on to work on it. Um, I am mm-hmm. not an Avatar fan. It just was like, I don't know, I think a little bit like after my time or and mm-hmm. it just like never got around to watching it but um it's it's a great list of people um and based just mm-hmm. on that i would i would gladly pick it up yeah it looks fun plus you get some really sweet dice oh. uh, at the higher tiers nice. like like really sweet looking dice i think obs- obsidian dice for the higher tiers Ooh, fancy yeah they're super fancy we also want to let people know about the one shot network patreon secret archive if you head over to patreon.com slash one shot podcast and pledge at the $5 and up level, you'll get access to some really great bonus content. We've already released an episode where we play a game of Hero Dog Saves Town by Alex Roberts from the Ultimate Micro RPG book edited by James D'Amato. Um, it was a great game. We had a lot of fun playing it, so much so that I actually played it again with my kids recently, mm-hmm. um, where our dog was the dog. Um, <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> I don't think it went quite as well, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was fantastic. And so hopefully you will take a listen. Um, we really enjoyed it, and we hope to bring you more stuff like that in the future. Absolutely. Um, Another way to support us is to go ahead and leave a rating or review for us. Uh, Right now, we are completely out of reviews to read to you. So if you leave one right now, I know. (laughs) If you leave one right now, you'll uh, you'll be at the top of the list for reviews to read next time. Uh, We are getting a lot better about recording these cold opens together, which is great. Yeah, scheduling. Uh, (laughs) I know. So that means uh, we'll be a lot better at getting those read in a timely manner. So uh, check out the links to some review platforms in our show notes or let us know where else you have left reviews so we can check them out. Uh, Other things you can do is just chat with us online um, and chat to other people about us. Uh, Mm. If someone asks for a podcast recommendation, we would love for you to throw our name out there. We also love chatting about the show with people, so um, you can find us on our Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. You can find us on Twitter. Please feel free to strike up a conversation with us there. Um, And, you know, just like I said, tell everybody who will listen. Absolutely. (laughs) Call your mom. (laughs) Mom, I have a great (laughs) podcast for you. It's so good. Um, If your brother asks for game recommendations, just uh, keep sending him links to our podcast. And (laughs) it worked great for me. Ed, for now, that's all we have for announcements. Thanks for joining us for the continuation of our Sentinel Comics series, everyone. Enjoy the show. episode of Character Creation Cast, Jeff was creating a hero from another dimension. John was creating a cursed hero with wicked claws. Amelia was creating, likely, a necromancer. And I was creating a magical girl-esque superhero. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy.
So it sounds like we've all got our uh, powers, our mm-hmm. yellow and green powers selected, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, so now, now it, abilities. abilities. Powers are the category. We already got powers well, and true. now abilities. And you're going to get more later. Yeah. Now, now it says archetype because uh, it right at the bottom of our uh, little thing that says roll these dice for archetype selection. And so yeah. I'm assuming that's the next step, right? And it'll yes, work just like the last step did. You're going to roll those dice, keep them, and you can add them together. Uh, up to two of them can be added together as well. So I've got a 10 and two eights. Uh, mine's kind of boring. I got two, two, and nine. Although elemental manipulator sounds really cool um, uh, for a elemental girl. manipulator is so good. Brian, two of your side up to sorcerer, so I don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true. Sorcerer is another one in there, doesn't it? That's that's kind of cool dice. too. I only get two dice, but one of them is a d12, which is money. Same. Oh wow, a twelve and a six is my dice. Yeah, oh, wow. same here. Because uh, you get to assign that later, which means one of my my uh, assigned things this round is going to be a D12, which is just really good. <gasps> oh, that's wild. Yeah. Four, seven, and nine, which uh, I could get sorcerer. <laughs> you could. I could get sorcerer. Um, I'm thinking I'll take Elemental Manipulator, um, probably for mine. That sounds very Magical Girl on brand. Mm-hmm. I could do marksman, which is a no. I could do armored, which is boring. Elemental manipulator would be okay. Yeah, anyone in armor is boring. Yeah, armor's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I got shadow as another possibility, uh, which I, I, and I rolled the same thing. <laughs> you did, <laughs> and 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 let me. I'll go ahead and tell you now. We both rolled a d twelve and a d six, and we both rolled eighteen. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Dibs on reality shaper. Though. Reality it's, it's shaper. Set perfect. If that is so set, good. Perfect. <laughs> oh, what else do I have? You and your dibs. Psychic's pretty cool, though. Nine is elemental mal- manipulator. The eleven is sorcerer. I'm rerolling my d6 just to get away from John. Seven oh. nine is sixteen. <laughs> Form changer, which I definitely read as foam changer. Change that foam. Out. <laughs> hey, someone's got to change that foam. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if your form is foam, then. <laughs> okay, obviously I'm picking sorcerer. I don't know why I'm bothering to read any of these other ones. Yeah, elemental manipulator for me. I tell you what, if you want to get the reality shaper, I'll go ahead and take close combat. I mean, I clearly do. I, I have illusions over here. Yeah. And transmutations. I'm and sorry, I'm not I even talking trans- to Mike. I have I, transmutation I'm losing, shape I'm, changing. I'm losing my my uh, professional <laughs> nature because I want to go fight with John, to, who's behind me. I started talking to the mic. I have fight to yell me. at John right now. <laughs> Excuse me for a second. BRB. No, it's okay. I think we can work this out because you're doing a claw thing and I'm doing a uh, a transmutation thing. Well, I also have transmutation as a power. <sighs> Copy. You speak of the same character? No, <laughs> I said mine first. Get out. <laughs> Well, your, yours comes from a different dimension, so. Yes. And and his has a terrible curse. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what. Why don't we just both take Reality Shaper and see what happens? Nah, I'll do close quarters. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> I think the game is robust enough to handle two Reality Shapers. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. Also, we get more powers. Uh-huh. And uh, qualities. Because anything oh, you yeah. put into powers can go into some new qualities. So if you want more uh, options on sort of your skills and what you're like, then you can go ahead and assign more to those if you really want to. Oh, this makes me happy because I had to not choose certain things because uh, yeah, it didn't work out. Yeah, and there's actually a step. The last step in character creation is called the retcon, and it lets you make one change to something there's a list of things you can do uh, oh, okay. which, which which can help you with uh with really fine tuning the character transmutation i could take transmutation i don't think i want to now i got to go back to p- trusty page 47 mhm always open yep it's hard to do with the physical book he has got the real that's book that's what sticky tabs are for i have so many of them i bought like hundreds of them for all my <laughs> game reading why why isn't uh like feelings a elemental energy selection um make one choose an elemental energy power like say radiation and and just say it's feelings i radiate emotions 
Yeah. Rad- yeah. Radiance, the closest one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or radiance is light or and cosmic. Yeah. I have cosmic love. Yeah. Mm. You can any one of those. Uh, you can take it and just write feelings instead. And uh, it, it's just rescanning. It won't change anything. Your, your weather sense. can just be a storm of emotion. Mm-hmm. Nuclear. <laughs> take uh, just take both fire and cold and reskin them to to uh, make yourself into the ultimate Sundari. <laughs> and I get a D six, which I'll throw into a uh, mental quality or something. Throw into some crap that doesn't matter. Well, I just I only have like one quality right now. I have two qualities. I need another one. And I'll put a D six in self discipline, and that way it'll be very apparent that my character is not well disciplined. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little bit of an edge to my magical girl and uh, give them uh, infernal energy powers. Nice. That sounds pretty cool. I was gonna pick that one actually too because I think that might be might be what I need. Okay. Now, as a close quarters combatant. Oh yeah, uh, obviously. Why did I not pick infernal before? Anyway, sorry. Continue. <laughs> so. With the close quarters combatant archetype, I have to take the close combat quality, which I already have, but I can swap out one of the dice from this with what it was on already. So I had a D8 in close combat. I'm going to put the D12 in close combat, and then I'll put a D6 into teleportation Mm. and the D8 into insight. Then I get three green powers. I did the same trick. I switched out uh, transmutation, which had been at a D8, to my new D12. Uh, picked up teleportation as my new D8. Uh, and then I have alertness at a D6. And those are my new powers and qualities. Hmm. I went uh, infernal as uh, infernal energy as a D10. And then um, acrobatics and close combat for D6s as qualities. Perfect. Hmm. I have yet to be offered access to the physical category, which means that uh, I cannot uh, or I have no close combat or ranged combat. It just hasn't come up. But that's OK, because this game doesn't really work that way. Right. So I have uh, two green abilities, both of which must use your elemental energy powers. So a, a couple of these green abilities are telling me that I can t- do something extra at the cost of taking damage. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the abilities, the powers that I'm utilizing are my elemental slash energy powers of Infernal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've also got that protection from energy mm-hmm. from the previous step. So I, I'm assuming that damage is reduced that yes, I'm doing is. to myself. Yeah. And you can heal yourself by damaging yourself in some situations. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Because sometimes you'll have the I absorb whatever energy quality and then you get a power that damages you with that energy and you're like, ha ha. That heal sounds really cool. By doing stuff. It just makes yeah. you awesome. Nice. Now I want to power game this, but. You always want to power I, I game. Think I'll, it, I if know, you take I, Elemental Manipulator, you're halfway to power gaming. It's, it's such a good archetype. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with doing that, though, because this isn't really a game that needs hard balance. It's mm-hmm. just. Yeah, you're just playing superheroes. It just means that the the uh, the storyteller, the uh, the what is it called, the rule, the director in this game, I forget what they're called, um, that they're not going to be trying to kill you as often as they are trying to win by, you know, uh, environmental factors. Can you rescue yeah. these hostages in time? You have kind of a Superman thing going on. Mm-hmm. You don't beat Superman with power. You beat him by making him sad. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that power's incredibly irritating. I love it. I am definitely taking it. Or ability, rather. All right. So I've got energy conversion that uh, allows me to defend using my infernal power. And then I use my max die, boosting uh, boost using your min die. I'm going to take also external combustion. Attack up to two targets using uh, the infernal power. Also, take an amount of damage equal to your mid die. Ooh. As long as it's the type of damage that you resist, that's great. Yeah, which is the type of damage that I resist, because it's nice. energy from myself. Huzzah. Hmm. I already have a bunch of reactions. Maybe that's too many. No, it's fine. 
Okay, so I'm taking a lot of reactions here. Um, as a reality shaper, I took the following green abilities. Warp space, uh, which attacks using transmutation. I can move the target of that attack anywhere else nearby, and this game uses zone uh, movement. So I can I can either move someone around within a zone, like say if there's a, a, a big bonfire in the middle of the zone, I can move an enemy into it, or mm. I can move them to another zone so I can be I can shoot them with transmutation uh, and like melt them out of the room and have them reform outside or something like that. Uh, if the target goes next, then I decide who takes the next turn after they finish their turn. And that is because and this is a, a neat thing about this game. Uh, turn order is decided by whose turn it currently is. So if when you're finished with your turn, you say who is going next and you can choose the enemies, oh. you can choose the environment or you can choose an ally. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. And then I also took not quite right, which is a reaction and it is a reaction to any time a die pool is rolled. Anytime anyone rolls a die pool, uh, I can adjust a single die in it up or down by one value on one die. Oh, wow. Uh, which is great for just carefully making everybody on our team a little tiny bit better and everybody on the other team a little tiny bit worse. That's really cool. Yep. And I also got one yellow ability and I chose another reaction. I have lots and lots of them. I like that my character kind of sits back and messes with things as they're taking place. Uh, and this one is never happened, which I'm sure John is about to say in a Jonathan Frakes voice. <laughs> mm. Our writers made this one up. <laughs> Uh, and that one is whenever a nearby enemy would create a bonus or a penalty, I can just remove it immediately. Wow. So anytime they're like, and I armor up my minions, I can be like, no, you didn't. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. Very reality shapey. Yeah. I, I get to choose another yellow ability here and, uh, multiple of them are making me very happy. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I Gosh, I, I could choose one that self heals every Always time I nice. attack somebody uh, with my energy powers with uh, the external combustion, or I could do energy redirection. So whenever I take damage from uh, infertile, I can also inflict that much damage on another target. Hmm. Um, Are I you dealing that, infernal damage? Is that what you redefined feelings as? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's no longer feelings. It's it's just pure uh, angsty infernal. Uh, <laughs> I just love the idea. Damage. Whenever I feel feelings, you feel feelings. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Someone made me sad, and it's your problem. Mm -hmm. Only that that sadness is now uh, infernal energy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take energy alignment. So if you would take damage from uh, infernal energy. Uh, reduce that damage to zero and recover that uh, amount of health instead. All right. Perfect. Other people can't make you more angsty. You've got enough for yourself. Exactly. All right. I get a ton of green powers to choose from and then turn one of them into a yellow. So I get three green and then a green power that technically sits in the yellow section. Oh, interesting. Uh, but I've got defensive strike. So I defend using shape-shifting, but then I also attack using my minimum die. Uh, offensive strike, I attack using close combat and use the maximum die. Throw minion. I love throw minion. I attack a minion <laughs> using transmutation, and whatever it rolls for defense attacks someone else. Oh, Ooh. wow. Uh, and then for my yellow, I took precise strike, I attack using Cursed Claws, and I ignore all penalties, all defensive actions, and no reactions are allowed. Oh, I can't make it slightly better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I picked Subdue. Just attack using Infernal is what I picked. And then um, you can hinder the same target with Max Die. And then I picked Powerful Blast. You attack, uh, attack using invisibility and use the max die because that's like my worst power. And what was the other one? Um, oh, cords of magic. Destroy all bonuses and penalties on a target. Hinder the target using infernal uh, using the max die. Just going nice. to, I don't know, throw demons at people or something. I like that last one. It's very much like a purifying situation. Mm -hmm. 
That's really cool. Yeah. And this will also, uh, this step gets you your next principal category. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've got two esoteric principles. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, You're just going to write down esoteric in both principles for now, and we'll get there when we get there. But esoteric is stuff like principle of magic or of whispers. I'm all about that. Yeah. Yes. All right. And then. And then we roll two more dice uh, for personality yeah. selection. Yeah. Everybody's rolling 2d10 at this stage. It, it oh, goes back to uniform. All right. I got a one and a five. I close so my dice. I can rolling. be a lone wolf, sarcastic, or distant. Please pick a lone wolf. <laughs> I'm a lone wolf. I don't have any friends. Uh, I don't have any friends except for all of you guys, but I hate you so much, but I love you. Okay, <laughs> settle down, Wolverine, with your reality bending claws. <laughs> <laughs> so I got natural leader, fast talking, or alluring. Oh, oh two sevens. Stalwart or? I don't think I want fast talking. Decisive. Stalwart or decisive. Oh, those are boring. <laughs> so either way with natural leader or alluring i get a d6 d8 d10 so green is d6 yellow d8 red d10 uh i rolled a four and a six and that lets me be distant alluring or mischievous lol mine are d8 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 or d8 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 <laughs> 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 well that's nice though that just means that you never have a d6 yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's no phase of the game where mm-hmm. you're worse. I suppose. Well, that's not too I mean, bad. I mean, look at what Mischievous is. A D6 and 2D8, because you get a little bonus ability instead. Oh, and Impulsive is D6, D6, D8. Oh, I want to be Impulsive. Yes. But you get a bonus for doing it. You you upgrade a power or quality by one step, uh, by one die. Oh, wow. Look at Nurturing, D6, D6, D12. Uh-huh. Wow. You're meek and nurturing the whole time until things really go sideways, at which point you go ballistic at trying to save everybody. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, I'm definitely taking mischievous. I mean, obviously. Yeah. So the only mechanical difference it looks like between natural leader and alluring is natural leader boost the out ability is boost an ally by rolling your single quality die. Mm-hmm. And alluring is boost your an ally using your single uh, power die. Yeah, there's only a couple of things that this step really does. It gives you your status die. So Mm -hmm. if if your status die options are the same, then they will look the same. It gives you your out ability uh, and uh, it it gives you some of them. If they give you bad dice like mischievous or or, uh, whatever's right above mischievous, I think it's impulsive. Mm -hmm. Then they will give you a little bonus as well. What's the single die that they're talking about there? Okay, so you're probably talking about the first sentence. Make up a quality based on your hero's backstory and assign a D8 to it. Oh, okay. So what you're going to do is it's a quality, not a power, um, but you're going to take something that is kind of a definitive aspect to your character that you don't currently have as a, as a quality. Just write down anything. You don't pick a skill. You make one up and you write it down with a D8. OK. Like, for example, my character sheet, I'm, I'm clearing out a character sheet that had Squirrel Girl on it. And right now it says eating nuts and kicking butts for her D8 power. <laughs> uh, so you just pick something that helps define your character. And it's just nice to have it on your sheet. Okay. And if you were talking about single die for the out ability. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. It's just the only die that that gives you. Uh, you take that. So instead of normally you roll three dice, you would just roll whatever that one thing's die is and take that result. Oh, okay. So you would be using for like natural leader, you would be using a quality and you would just use that one die. Yeah. Okay. So if you were like, I've got the quality of inside at d8 then you'd say all right i'm gonna use inside for it i roll a d8 and just a d8 rather than taking three dice in the mid it's just whatever result you roll on one die interesting i think i might uh based on that swap to alluring i was thinking natural leader but um i I like my power set better and alluring utilizes the power set for the about uh out ability sure So I get a a D8 assigned to a made up quality. I can give you an example because I just did mine. Uh, Mm -hmm. I've decided that my character has been hopping between dimensions for a long time. And so for that D8 quality, I've given them dimensional studies, 
which means that whenever they meet someone, uh, they can have uh, my character will have maybe met them before in another dimension and know things about them based on how they turned evil in another dimension or, or were, was a hero there. Uh, so it, it's kind of a, a mental insight quality based mm. on just, yeah, it's basically like, I know a thousand of you. Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to take my uh, personality as lone wolf because I'm cursed and I don't want people to get near me. Uh, my out ability is I boost an ally with my single uh, creativity die. And I've got D8s down the board for my status dice. And for my quality, I have chaos theory, which is since the claws basically mutate me and the reality around me constantly. Uh, my character has gotten to the point where they can see some order in the chaos and what's about to happen. Okay. I feel like it's coming together. Yeah. I'm, it's all, it's coming, all coming together. together. What is a quality that you would give a D8 to if someone was a necromancer? Lord of the dead. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bone collector. <laughs> Mistress of the night. <laughs> I've got a dust for that. Bone haver. <laughs> Thank you for not saying grave digger. I can get you a toe. Uh, I think I'm going to go uh, magical girl optimism. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. It's great. For my quality, D8. You do you, Ryan. I will. <laughs> It's a complex exploration of how you can take every role playing game and magic make a magical girl in it. Pretty much. <laughs> that is our show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I 100% this time blame John yeah, for well, putting you know. that seed into my brain. I think, Ryan, we need to start like being serious about this, though. Like, if this is who we're going to be, <laughs> then like we need to get serious. And every single game is a question of how do we make a magical girl and a necromancer in this game? <laughs> I mean, you guys, you guys do your shows by seasons, right? You could do a season of that. Every, every series, yeah. It. Yeah. Oh, we could. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like Ryan is more consistent at that than I am at making magical girls. Like. You've got a lot of angsty characters. I do. Though. I do like make a lot of like vaguely evil characters. <laughs> and and to be fair, mine mine is a uh, magical girl uh, combined with a uh, slightly angsty energy, I guess. Mm. I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah. I, I will go to any length. I will take any weakness the game imposes on me if it allows me to play something other than a human. There you go. So I'm, I'm right there with you. I have a uh, I have a tell. I've been so far just like writing down the powers as I pick them, like what they are. But I feel like now that I have all of them in front of me, I'm like, oh, that's not what that is. Um, yeah, like yeah, I have in yeah. this is reskin inventions time. and it's like, oh, no, that's definitely shambling corpses now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it could even still be inventions. It could be little bone machines that you like, made. You throw out little things made of bone and they clatter oh, around and do yes. one thing. Oh, Just yeah. bone friends. <laughs> Well, yeah. bone friend. <laughs> <laughs> just had it. I'm just uh, inventing uh, minions. There you go. This next step. Yeah. Uh, so red abilities are different than every ability you've learned so far uh, in that uh, rather than being assigned out by the archetype or the power source or whatever, they are done. Everybody gets two and they are done by your powers and your qualities. So when you're scrolling through the red abilities, you'll see things like material powers, elemental energy powers. If you have an elemental energy power, then you can choose a red ability from the elemental energy power set. Oh. Uh, if, you if you have a quality that's from the mental qualities, you can choose a red, red ability from the mental quality set. Okay. Okay. So, so just choose the powers you want to focus in your when when you're in your like hour of ultimate need and you, you're doing your uh, your ultimate technique. Uh, choose the powers that you want to see reflected and the qualities you want to see reflected. Find those categories and choose from there. Hmm. My character's focused heavily on transmutation, so I'm definitely going to be picking at least one red from ment or materials, for example. I mean, there's one in elemental called purification, so I doesn't even matter what it does that's what we're picking <laughs> <laughs> summoned allies sounds pretty cool 
I'm definitely taking it. It's always cool. And I'll explain how it works uh, when we get to it. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to love that. It's a neat step. And by all means, we can both take it. It doesn't change anything. Right. Because the the flavor is going to be totally different, right? Absolutely. Mine's going to be transmuted things that I write uh, that I pull up from the environment. It'll be Mm. like uh, like uh, telephone poles and mailboxes and stuff come to life and march out to fight. Nice. I think the the more down and out my character gets, the the scarier uh, their abilities become. That's what I'm kind of leaning in. And that is perfect. Maybe like less adorable or like. Was that? I said like less adorable. Yeah, less adorable. Uh, More more like hellish, I guess. Maybe your maybe your summoned allies are like the kind of darkest emotional versions of yourself. Hmm. Like rage you and and uh, and, you know uh, that hateful you and so on pop up around you that kind of but really you could do anything. Yeah, I think I'm using infernal for this one. Nice. I'm finally gonna get a reaction. I'm wondering if I should take a fifth reaction or not. Oh, there's one called Resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we're taking her. And I got to figure out uh, what other categories uh, my powers came from and qualities. All right. So for my red, uh, from Signature Weapon, I took a charged up blast. So I attack using Cursed Claws and at least one bonus. Uh, I attack using all the dice, and then I destroy all bonuses on me. Ooh. And then the second one is from the mental category. Aware response. When an opponent attacks or hinders me or a nearby ally, I can attack them as a reaction using my single creativity die. Nice. I gotta go back to page uh, 47 again. Good old page 47. It's got so much. It's all the things you need. So power suit is under the technological category. That's interesting. Yes. Now, it, now it has a whole bunch of like uh, powers in here that you, you have to select. You know, it's kind of in the back bracket power. Um, if I chose technological powers and my only technological power is power suit, I would have to choose power suit for that. Or mm-hmm. I could utilize other powers as well. Nope. Whatever the category of red power is, you have to fill in the bracket with something from that category. Okay, that's what I was thinking, so. Okay, so for my red abilities, I'll be taking Summoned Allies from Materials, uh, which is use Transmutation to create a number of minions equal to my mid-die. So I pick a, I, I roll a Transmutation pool and get a mid number of minions who are D6 minions. Uh, then I choose one basic action that they each perform, and this game has a, a limited set of basic actions. They are Attack, Defend, Hinder, boost and overcome. Uh, But I choose one of those five things for all of the minions. And at the start of each of my turns, they all do that thing. Oh, wow. Uh, Now, the way minions work in this game, and in fact, the way enemies work in this game is they get it. They are a die. So when I create D6 minions, I put D6s on the table on a card that says transmutated minions. Oh, nice. when, When it's their turn, I pick them up and roll them. And if someone attacks them, then they defend by being picked up and rolled. <laughs> so uh, minions in this game and lieutenants for that matter are very, very simple to play. Uh, they, they are represented by a single die. When it's their turn, they roll themselves. Okay. My other one is considered planning. Uh, it's a, it's a boost using creativity that I apply to myself with my max die, but I maintain my, my mid die because I'm going to use it to defend against all attacks used against me until my next turn. And my min die result becomes a reaction until my next turn that I can use to hinder anyone who chooses to attack me. Oh, no, it's anyone who chooses to attack anyone. Hmm. So basically, I can uh, I can throw myself a huge boost, become become more awesome at something, defend against everything for a turn. And, I, and uh, I'm assuming because this is transmutation, this is probably me, me like pulling the ground up around myself into an, an ersatz suit of armor for a second. Uh, nice. And uh, that way I'm defending against anyone punching me. And then not only that, when they punch me, I'm made of rocks and spikes. Now they get hurt. They take a hinder for doing so. There you go. I took abilities based entirely on their names. I picked (laughs) purification, which removes all penalties and bonuses, um, but it can only be used uh, once per issue. 
Um, oh no, that one was once per scene, I think. Hold on. Oh uh, yeah, once per scene. And then the other one I took was Resurrection, uh, which is once per issue. If your health would go to zero, um, I can use invisibility and close combat and my red zone die, um, and the health becomes that number. Nice. Nice. Yep. Um, so I took uh, summoned allies from the elemental energy powers. Um, so when I, I use infernal to create a number of D6 minions, uh, just like was kind of described be before, uh, they act at the start of your turn. And then I took from my hallmark powers uh, with my uh, signature weapon, um, ultimate weaponry. To boost yourself using a uh, signature weapon, uh, use your max die. That bonus is persistent and exclusive. Attack using your mid die plus that bonus. Yeah, that's a good one. I also I, I want to like further describe my signature weapon. Um, I mean, love is uh, poetic, but like mm. it's not. But it what is love? It doesn't feel tangible. I don't know. Maybe don't hurt me. Yeah, don't hurt me. <laughs> and, and can it hurt you anymore? <laughs> I'm gonna say signature weapon outfit, utilizing oh. utilizing my costume. Oh, oh, okay, because it's a power suit kind of thing. Yeah, so I can like utilize parts of my costume as a uh, as as a weapon. So <sighs> you, you already know, did that once. Standard Tira, <laughs> I know, but this is uh, more magic tech instead of like magic cloth, I guess. Okay. Last time it was a pirate, so it's different. It is. Dark. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, you got to skip down a ways to get to principles. It's going to be page 122 is where it starts. Although that's going to change if you have the physical book. No, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. Oh, you're using it based on the, the printed number on the page. Gotcha. Never mind. So I've got an identity and a responsibility principle. Yeah, I have esoteric and ideals. Got lots of esoterics floating around. Uh, yeah, in I've there. got esoteric and esoteric. Mm -hmm. yeah, for someone with cursed claws that causes reality to constantly shift around them, I have nothing that's esoteric about me. No. Principles of exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> so what page am I looking at for this again? Uh, 122. Uh -huh. Aha, there it, it is. starts, and then you'll just sort of scroll down to, or flip to wherever the... Oh, immortality, the, obviously. Esoteric God. is the first one, so 124 is just right where all your things will be. Oh, there's a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Oh, yep. okay. That's why we oh. weren't choosing it right away, because it's Undead easier to just do them on there. at the same time. That's interesting. Oh, man. Is it immortality or is it Undead. I'm taking <laughs> Destiny. I'm grabbing Destiny from the Esoterics. Uh, principle of Destiny. Mm-hmm. How does it cause you to do stuff? I mean, I already picked Lone Wolf. I may as well take the Principle of the Loner. <laughs> and see if there's a Principle of the Wolf you can take, too. No, it just says you're hungry like them. I mean, <laughs> Principle of the Loner already says you're the best there is at what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely taking Principle of the Undead. Oh, God. So good. Principle of the inner demon sounds really cool. And this will give you a sense of what this uh, what, what the principles actually do and look like. Um, you'll see that they give you a little bit of a role playing tip. That's the first thing they give you. Uh, then also your twist suggestions and your single overcome action ability for each one. So they kind of they kind of serve somewhere between role playing suggestions, alignments and XP gen generating mechanics. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah, I should take Principle of the Loner, and then for my other one, Principle of the Team. <laughs> <laughs> I am just Wolverine. That's 100% Wolverine. I'm, I'm all by it's myself, absolute. and also I'm on every team. <laughs> That's amazing. I guess you guys can be here, too. <laughs> but we're not working together. He's the best there is at what he does, and what he, is, what he does is remain inconsistent. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to go with Destiny and Clockwork. Because clockwork isn't actually about clockwork. It's about ordered systems and understanding how everything is moving and changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, my second one is going to be the principle of the everyman. Nice. All right. I think I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go with principle of the inner demon and uh, principle of the future. 
So the inner demon, I have a darkness in me that I strive to keep suppressed and I can reach out to it. Um, and for the principle of the future, I have visions or knowledge of things yet to come. The problem with not having the PDF version is I have to type all of this stuff out. Yeah, I I'm just copy pasting. <laughs> And I'm just going to rewrite both of my minor twists because they don't quite match what I what I wanted, and I don't care. Hmm. All right. There you go. Uh, so my two principles give me the green abilities of uh, principle of the loner. I overcome when doing something that is separate from the team, and I get to use my max die and give everyone hero points. The principle of the ever man, every man is... Uh, I overcome and use a bonus that was given to me from another hero. And again, Max die and everybody gets some hero points. Nice. And I've just realized that what I was writing was actually just another principle. So I'm just changing it. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have principle of destiny, which is that signs and portents lead me toward an inevitable place in my life. But I can always gain a measure of direction from my understanding of that with a minor twist of what omen of dire fortune did you just witness and a major twist of what heinous prophecy just came true which I'm going to slightly rewrite to be that I've seen dimensional collapses in other dimensions and that I see signs and portents that indicate that the dimension I'm in is headed towards those same collapses. Mm. And then I have a uh, principle of mastery, which is I am good. I've thoroughly studied my own powers and I am very proud of my mastery of them. I know a great deal about the metaphysics of my powers. And my minor twist is how did I fail in, in, in the moment? How did my powers not work? And the major twist is what side effects are they causing me? Okay. And my green abilities I got are just overcome a situation directly connected to your destiny and uh, overcome a situation that uses your powers in a new way, which I love if I have transmutation and illusion. Right. Oh, that's very cool. I'm super happy with it. Yeah. This character sheet's so messy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so principle of the future, um, my role playing is uh, you have visions or knowledge of things yet to come. Minor twist of what unintended ripple did your actions have? Major twist of what ripple effect now threatens the future as you know it. Uh, so that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and then the, uh, the green ability principle of the future, uh, overcome using your knowledge of possible futures and use your max die. Uh, you and each of your allies gain a hero point. Um, I thought that was a really cool uh, twist on the the character. Um, it and is then, an interesting twist. And then principle of the inner demon. Uh, so you have a darkness in you that you strive to keep suppressed. You can reach out to your dark side to connect with similar forces. A uh, minor twist of what sinister act comes from tapping into your dark side. And major twist, what havoc does your dark side inflict as you allow it to take control? Oh, that's wild. Um... And then principle of the inner demon, uh, tap into your dark psyche to overcome a problem and use your max die. You and each of your allies gains a hero point. That sounds like a lot of fun. Hmm. I took principle of the undead. <laughs> uh, let's see here. You are living challenge. Uh, you can still be hurt and damaged, but you can ignore many of the afflictions that bother the living. Minor twist is, how did your undead nature unnerve those around you? Major twist, how are you risking your connection to the living world with what happened? And the overcome is, uh, overcome a situation where your undead nature comes in handy. And I took principle of ambition. There's something that you want and you strive toward achieving your goals no matter the cost. You see paths to victory that no one else will. A uh, minor twist is the pursuit of your goal getting in the way of being a hero in this situation. Major twist, what did you just pass up or miss that could have helped you achieve your biggest goal at last? And the overcome is uh, overcome a situation where someone else has given you a bonus from a boost. That's cool. Right. That's a nice one. That means anytime yeah. anyone else is boosting you, you can you can throw that right into hero points. Mm hmm. I think I've got my character figured out. That 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 step helped. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I already knew exactly what I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I've, what I've basically moved away from is the the uh, the imp. The I'm not great I, kazoo. I'm not playing mm -hmm. as not, not playing as Mickey as spit like anymore. <laughs> that is really interesting because I I went from like straight up magical girl to like 
magical girl with a very dark side. Yeah, yeah. you've got something going on that's telling you the future. Yeah. Yeah, that was an unexpected uh, gain to my character that I, I think would uh, really put them into a, a really interesting path, especially if it's this weird uh, dark energy inside of them. So now that you've done that, there is there's really only two more steps. And right now, I believe we're currently past them. So what you're going to want to do is go to page 112. Yeah. So it looks like the retcon step is where we're on step six. Uh huh. So now the retcon step is a chance for you to take a look at your character now that you've largely got the powers, qualities, and abilities put together mm -hmm. and make a change uh, or add something that helps kind of shore up your design. If your character is like, for example, your character now has kind of a prophecy element to, to, uh, to them that might not be reflected in your current set of powers or qualities. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to, you could go add a D six power. That's like, I don't know, uh, the future psyched or something from the psychic category to help you kind of shore that up. Or if you can't think of anything like that, you can just increase a power, uh, increase a di uh, your red status die, change a principle, or even just gain an extra red ability. Oh, wow. So you can do one of the following. There's a whole bunch of different options here. That's pretty cool. So you could swap dice, swap quality dice. Okay. I'm pretty happy with my power set, so I am just going to increase my red status die because as a mischievous, I was already kind of having bad status dice, and this will help me fix that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to switch the dice uh, in between transmutation and shapeshifting so that transmutation is a little better. So that'll take the D8, shapeshifting will go to the D6. Yeah, I think I'll increase my red status die as well from a D10 to a D12. Perfect. You're really clutch in a hard situation. Yeah. Yeah, increasing the status die is... Basically, was there anything you really weren't happy with? No? Then just increase your status die. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about changing. One of my qualities was close combat, and that's like the one that doesn't feel like. Yeah, you can go back and just right. change it to any other choice that you made at that step, or you could have made at that step. Yeah. And I'm going to go through and just Yeah, start I'm going to change it to imposing. Renaming everything. Oh, I don't know if I have that in me. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm going to submit this to your dropbox so so uh listeners can go and look at it and i want it to be as awesome as possible i'm going to there submit this for the approval of the midnight society so obviously I want it to <laughs> they've already turned it down they don't know you don't need the <laughs> approval you're, you're a lone wolf <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing that the uh that, that's uh, what, what's that show called john are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the dark was missing? Was the kid who just ran in and told the story whether or not anyone cared. <laughs> <laughs> also, the following page after uh, this is your health calculation as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I was trying to look at uh, necromancer names and like, they're just like <laughs> terrible. This one's name is just Cesar Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like on a random rolling chart or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, just go with something that sounds evil, but isn't go with like, I don't know, Gazpacho Maleficus. Um, what is we were looking up like terms for like when somebody like colloquialisms for when a person is dead um, for some other game. And there was I don't know, we somehow ended up with like crow pudding like there was something to do with like pudding and crows i don't remember what the exact like term was but we were like crow pudding it is hey you've probably seen that that uh meme going around with the the star sign linked up with potato foods just go with with uh <laughs> necromancer professor sagittarius neoki <laughs> yes <laughs> i think i'll do health health while uh while i think on a name yeah okay so for health Add up the following numbers. Eight. That's easy. <laughs> okay, I got it. Eight. Maximum value of your red status die. Mm. Eight. Maximum value. Any of your athletic powers or mental qualities. Oh, boy. And if you don't, um, it's I a don't... four, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, I think one of my qualities was mental. No. It's not. Yeah, I think my... Athletics, the best one I have is a D6. I got a D10 in my creativity, so I get to use that. Ooh. 
I'm mischievous, so I can use whatever uh, single creative or whatever single quality or power I would prefer. So I'm just going to take transmutation and give myself a D12. Oh, wow. Or a 12. But it, it's made up for by my having bad status dice. Yeah. So I'm up to 26 at this point. So 8, 20, 30, Dang. 36. Oh, wow. And then you can take a D8 or just a 4. I took a D8 and rolled a 6. I took a D8 and rolled an 8. Oh, I'm gonna son of a... take a D8 as well, because uh, why not live on the edge, right? Exactly. Ooh, I also rolled an 8. All right, Amelia. Three. It's on you to roll under average. I did. I rolled a 3. Yay. (laughs) Yay. Which would put me at a 23. Oh, boy. You're the the squishy one in the group. Yeah. That's standard. But that's okay, because I'm already dead. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So it has a health quick reference chart for what number we get, right? So you're going to write down those ranges in each of the three call out boxes under health range. So, for example, I have 36. So between 36 and 28 health, I'm in the green range. But the moment I drop to 27, I go to the yellow range, even if the environment itself is not in yellow yet. Okay. Yeah, I ended up with 34 HPs. Hey, me too. Cool. Yeah. So 34 to 26, 25 to 13, and then 12 to 1. That's pretty cool. And then I'm assuming you just put your current at your max. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, interestingly, after every uh, like scenario, basically, once you're done with a scene, you'll bump your health up to whatever the next category of what you were in. Oh. So if you were in red, you go to the max yellow. If you were in yellow, you go to your max green. Oh, very cool. And if you were out, you just go to your max red. So there you go. Okay. Oh, and I see they've got a powers explained uh, thing here. Yep. In case you don't know what words are. Yeah. That's great for things like some of the weirder powers, like multiple limbs or something like that. If you if you just want to know what that means. Mm hmm. That's very cool. OK, so we got our health. We got all that other stuff. And it looks like we're into the finishing touches now. Mm hmm. Yes, indeed. All right. And finishing so- touches is literally just filling out that top. Uh, right side box where you just put down your gender and if you want to and your age and eyes and that kind of thing mm-hmm. your age and your eyes that's it <laughs> just that's all we need prince. to know <laughs> just those two you can stop after those age eyes what do you know age. they're both 17 400 <laughs> I'm as old as my tongue and a little older than my teeth there we go all right I like this character I need a name uh hero name and alias i'm assuming hero name is your your regular everyday yeah. name and then it's alias people, it's uh it's your hero name oh Superman okay so it's Superman. backwards from so the alias yes. is clark kent at that point mm-hmm. hmm. we could good we could get into a long kill bill style discussion about which one of those is the alias but um <laughs> we won't <laughs> noting that the kill bill movie got it dead wrong mm-hmm. yep absolute flip backwards mm-hmm Get out of here, Tarantino. <laughs> I wish that was what people yelled at Quentin Tarantino about all the time, instead of like putting too much violence and cursing in his movies. If every time he appeared in an interview, people were like, you got Batman and Superman backwards. <laughs> you don't understand comics. Just every time. <laughs> also, what's up with all the feet, Quentin? I have a fetish for it. <laughs> anyway, back to Batman and Superman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't think of a good name. You just need a superhero name? Or I mean, both. A necromancer really. name? I, um, my character is 400 years old. Mm-hmm. And for their skin, I put white. Just so white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds to me like what you need is one of those Latin-y names. Yeah. Hero name, Resurrectus. Yeah. <laughs> Ew, I hate it. <laughs> Dispensorum Beveratus. <laughs> it just means soda machine. Resurrection. <laughs> no. Bone bone zone? No. Nope. <laughs> How about os zona? Is there, is there a word or two that, that means uh feel it in my bones? I mean that's just Latin for bone zone. <laughs> <laughs> Could just go with bones. Maybe with a Z if you want to be edgy. 
<laughs> I mean, you could just be necris, something like that. Osseus, that's just Latin for skeleton. I know, I was kind of thinking that that does already sound like a superhero name. Which one? Osseus. Yeah, totally. Well, you yeah. just need a, you need an honorific in front of that. That's all, and you're all set, just like Professor Osseus or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, I got my name. Names, rather. So I've got um, alias of Arya Felonius. Uh, hero name, Crimson Avatar. Ooh. Very good. Do you want to keep going? Tell us more about those attributes. Oh, and so yeah. On? Uh, she, her, uh, age 15, height 5 foot 4, uh, purple eyes uh, with red and purple mixed uh, colored hair, uh, tan skin, lanky and unassuming build. All right. So I went with uh, my hero name is The Constant. And that's because his whole gimmick is that he's the only version of himself that he has ever encountered in countless parallel universes. Oh, wow. The, is your he, alias Constance? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> that would have been very good. Uh, but yeah, uh, everywhere he goes, he meets duplicates of every single other person he meets over and over and over again, the same people. But he's never met another of himself. He's pretty sure he's the only one. That's wild. And his alias is Tom Hanks. <laughs> and, uh, and makes sense. And the no reason his alias is Tom Hanks is because he's found that in ev almost every universe he goes to, uh, whether he's an actor or not, Tom Hanks is a beloved figure that everyone likes. Uh, and, and so he finds it easy to disarm people by meeting new, new people whenever he pops into a new dimension, maybe being like, yeah, my name's Tom Hanks. Yes. Just like the famous person you all enjoy. <laughs> Oh, that's and amazing. even that's another alias. He, I don't know what his real name is. It's probably Constance. <laughs> yeah. Constant sorrow. <laughs> Some sort of man of constant sorrow. Uh -huh. Oh, and then uh, he's male. He's uh, it, somewhere in his 40s. He's about he's just under six feet tall, has green hair, black eyes and and uh, light brown skin. And his build is I just put unassuming. Now I want to I, I want to make sure I don't add slender. <laughs> and his hero outfit is a loose fitting jumpsuit that is strapped all 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 around with all kinds of various it's a a light blue jumpsuit with a bunch of black straps all over it and ev every strap is there to hang a variety of tools uh but anyone looking will notice that they have no idea what any of those tools are they don't make any sense okay finally he has a wrap around visor he wears that constantly sp uh, that constantly cycles through various light spectrums um which would be really disorienting for anyone else to wear, but he's always worn it because dimensions have different levels of what is visible electromagnetic light. Does he have a tiny airplane, though? Do I have a tiny airplane? Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of my tools. Yes, it's I, I have a tiny airplane on my straps. <laughs> <laughs> just need to know for sure. <laughs> Are you just checking to see if I'm making the elephant again? I don't even remember. Just double checking. I just want to be sure. <laughs> Event Horizon, I think. Event his name. Horizon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, this guy. I sadly, I made the decision to go for Interstellar and not Alien. So he's just a guy. I've I failed in my my general mission. <laughs> ah, yes. Too mischievous for your mischief. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, Crimson Avatar's outfit is like uh, a swirling red and purple energy. That kind of forms around her body from a central amulet. So it's kind of like her, her power suit. Mm -hmm. And uh, cool. most, of, most of her abilities uh, stem from, from that activation. That's awesome. I know there's a, there's a late period X-Man that has that kind of visual. I forget her name, but... Armor? Armored. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not exactly the same. You're saying that it's like a swirling energy source. And I think Armor's whole thing is like invisible giant arms. Or not invisible, mm. translucent. She's basically like Green Lantern, but only for creating a mech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Okay, I see. That that looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's like a Green Lantern red-looking mech of sorts. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is this is like actual uh, outfit that replaces her whatever outfit she was wearing. Oh, cool. All right, my uh, hero name is Chimera. Ooh. My alias is Robert Kruger. Uh, <laughs> mm. They are non-binary. Mm -hmm. Age 19, six foot three, eyes red, hair constantly changing, skin constantly changing, build constantly changing. 
and costume. Always changing as well, except for the claws, which are always present and always the same, no matter what uh, they change into. Oh, cool. Reality. And always warping. glowing red eyes. So those mm-hmm. are the only two constants. Uh, I'm the constant. <laughs> Constance. <laughs> I'm, my real name is Constance. Your real name is Tom Hanks. Oh, that's right. That's what you think. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Tom Hanks. Just like your famous Earth celebrity. We've got a range of uh, ages for this group. 15 to 400. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to hear about the necromancer. Do, 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 does the necromancer look 400? Uh, no. Not a day over like, 200. <laughs> I can't think of an honorific. So we'll have to just, like, I'm going to have to think about that so far it's just osseous alias mm-hmm. bonnie newman <laughs> um gender uh i put she her for her pronouns um age 400 height 59 eyes black hair black skin so so white um build is slim almost like wispy and a costume i put black robes red lining very sith vibes <laughs> i like that very cool so it did we do it? Did we make our people? I think there's, we did. There's characters. That's characters right we there. We did it. Wow. That's characters. You can't say it ain't. No. Yeah. Well, I think just... it, at this point, you should be able to look at your character and kind of go, oh, yeah. All right. I see that this has come together. You've got powers. You've got abilities. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. I've got my man who could ask for anything more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do have a, a very good uh, picture in my, my mind of who this person is kind of is as a hero um i i am trying to uh stretch that to what they would be like as a normal person too but doesn't matter yeah i mean it, it could potentially matter i think i like though that it, it didn't feel like i had to work to get there yeah to get to like what how to pull all of this stuff together um Unlike in Heroes Unlimited, where it felt like none of my things went together. and <laughs> Well, I think the real thing is because you get a choice in your random selection, yeah. you can, while it is sort of a bit randomized, you can guide yourself a little towards something. So if you see, mm-hmm. you know, I've got three choices and two of them don't make any sense, you can avoid right. having that sort of i'm a hodgepodge of random nonsense problem yeah, yeah. oh yeah the other thing is, there is nothing stopping you from just making choices at every level mm-hmm. uh, right. choosing your background and so on especially because some of them like when you're rolling a d10 for for a uh, background or 2d10 you're unlikely to roll the 20 which i think is like created or something because it's a one in a hundred chance that you rolled two tens Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So making your choice, doing it choice based will give you some access to some of the things that are otherwise very hard to get at. Uh, but I like the guided system here. You end up it, it makes sense as you make your way through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us for our Sentinel Comics character creation episodes, Jeff and John. Hey, this has been here. so fun. These, yeah. these, this is a fun character creation system. Uh, you warned us. Uh, quote unquote warned us in the beginning uh but i believe you know <laughs> <laughs> we didn't before you're not very trustworthy you but were warned well no we did say nice things about heroes unlimited so you should not trust us <laughs> it's not a bit <laughs> it's a good game mm-hmm. mm. so do you want to remind people where they can find you online Uh, You can find us at SystemMasteryPodcast.com. Technically, we're members of the One Shot Network, but we like to do our own thing. We're what you call a lone wolf. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) And yet we're a member of every team. At SystemMasteryPodcast.com, you can find all of our shows, System Mastery, Movie Mastery, Expounded Universe, uh, or you can find us at our Patreon, Patreon.com slash System Mastery, where all those shows are still there and free, but you can now pledge in to get all of our bonus content, including a bunch of shows that only exist as bonus shows. Mm. We make... A lot of stuff. And hey, if you like so the stuff, many podcasts, <laughs> so many. And hey, if you like the stuff we make, you can even buy our books. We've got uh, I'll just mention one of them. Uh, go by Dungeon Meister, our our book of nerdy cocktail recipes. It's on Amazon. It's uh, it's 75 cocktail recipes for parties with uh, a strong kind of game night nerd game theme. Hmm. And it's it's a it's a fun book. And I'm, I'm mentioning that one specifically because I'm right in the middle of writing the follow up to it, a cookbook. 
Oh, fun. Ooh. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Exciting times. <laughs> Otherwise, you can follow us at our social medias, which John can do. Yeah. Uh, at System Mastery for mostly Jeff and the show. Uh, at Gurgle Spasm for me, specifically, <laughs> if you just want me. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't want me? Let's be honest. <laughs> but you're a lone wolf, so it's true. Fine. No, no one can tweet, have. No one really. can have him. <laughs> but if I can, we can't can change him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much for sitting down with us for an actually good game this time. Uh, mm -hmm. We will be back again next week for part three. Mm -hmm. Call to action. Yeah, like that. These episodes have been so much fun so far. Like, mm -hmm. and this, you know, I, I, I like the description of this game as the promise of Heroes Unlimited fulfilled. <laughs> um, I think, like, I can start to see, like, what what it is about the genre that really, like, pulls you in. Um, yeah. because Heroes Unlimited did not show me that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I know. Like, no one seems to you've understand. Got so many, there's so many random tables. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I cannot wait to take this book to a catacon. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, this was, this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. And I'm really mm -hmm. glad that we got time to cover this one finally. Absolutely. Um, because as I'm learning, it's been on our list since the beginning. And I feel so <laughs> bad. <laughs> I feel so bad about that. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. There's, oh gosh, there's so many games on our list. And we just try to like... We try to have a balance of like new things and old things and like mm -hmm. crunchy things and lighter things. And I, I um, you know, and a matter of like, who can we find to talk about them when we are also available? And just, uh -huh. it's, oh gosh, what a mess. So I'm so sorry that this has been on our list for <laughs> so long. <laughs> um, but ta da, we did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> and I had nice things to say about it. So I think mm -hmm. really it, it's probably, um, better for the designers that we had a chance to cover Heroes Unlimited first so oh, that yeah. I could be <laughs> as excited as I was about this game. <laughs> um, it's true. But before we uh, let you go for the week and uh, let you wonder what I'll have to say in the discussion episode, um, here are our quick calls to action. Mm -hmm. uh, first up, check out the remarkable indie RPG making waves on Kickstarter, Avatar Legends. Uh, we have a link in the show notes to that one. Remember to check out the One Shot Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. If you are a backer at the $5 and up level, you get access to our secret archive, which is going to have a whole lot of extra character creation cast content every month. And um, if we get extra ambitious, maybe a couple new bonus episodes every month after a while as well. We'll see. Who knows? We'll see. You know, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see where the world where the world takes us. <laughs> exactly. Uh, also, we are still out of reviews to read to you. Uh, if you would like to help us out, leave us a rating or a review on any of the sites where you can do that for podcasts. If we find it, we will read it here. Uh, you can also spark up a conversation with us on Twitter or in our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. Uh, we would love to see you there. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. For now, thank you for joining us. Check out next week's episode where we will discuss the character creation process for Sentinel Comics with Jeff and John. It was a fantastic discussion, so we hope you can join us for that. Until then, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Drink lots of water. Don't go out in the humidity if you don't have to. <laughs> don't ride a bike in humidity <laughs> don't ride if you a don't bike. have to. Don't, don't be like Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast 
or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Campaign. Campaign is an actual play podcast exploring lawn form role playing. The current campaign, Skyjacks, takes place in an original setting inspired by the music of the Decemberists, folk tales and classic adventure fiction. Join Liz Anderson, John Patrick Cohen, Tyler Davis, Johnny O'Mara, and Game Master James D'Amato as they tell a tale of daring sky pirates. Also, it's basically an elaborate retelling of Weekend at Bernie's. Just search for Campaign or James Tomato on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app.